In this video we are going to talk a bit about Land Rover airbag systems and fault finding airbag warning lights and stuff. Right, I'm no expert but I've learnt a bit and will share what little knowledge I have with you guys. So we have bought this Land Rover Discovery Sport crash damaged. So and the passenger airbag, sorry, the pedestrian airbag on the bonnet had deployed. It's broken my windscreen. We've replaced that and we've done a video on replacing that. I'll put that in the description below. We then use the gap diagnostics IID tool to clear the stored fault that it had a crash and it cleared it fine. But what we didn't realize that there is another fault on the car and it's saying the curtain airbags have got a fault and we'll go through what the fault is and how to fault read it. Right so we are using the gap diagnostics IID tool we have plugged it into the ODB2 port so if we turn the ignition on so what light is the airbag warning light so destiny will zoom in there so it's the sort of passenger strapped in with a big balloon now it's gone off and it's come back on again now it 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 should light up for everyone because that proves the bulb is working but it then should go off and stay off when you start the car if it doesn't go off like us you've got a problem and you will not pass your mot if you have got an airbag warning light showing so right we have got the gap diagnostics tool plugged in we have got the ignition on we are going to go into my phone i'm going to open up the gap diagnostics thingy and then it's got the tool it's found it all now what we are going to do here is we are going to go into the faults menu and we are going to read the faults and it's got the airbag this is what we're worried about here so the airbag and it's got these two faults okay now it gives you this very specific code so the b0029 defines which component of the airbag circuit and bear in mind the airbag circuit's got multiple parts so we've got obviously we've got the driver's airbag we've got airbags i think there's a knee airbag on this one there's an airbag here passenger airbag we have got curtain airbags at the side we have got airbags in the seats we've got the the main brains of the srs system actually lives under the middle here which is quite interesting because it's like a black box it can record what time what mileage the airbags were deployed and also what speed you were going so they put it like a black box in an airplane because sometimes when there is a crash the crash investigators will analyze the data stored in that box so they put it somewhere central where it's not going to get damaged in a crash right where was i going so not only does it give you what component is at fault so the b0029 it gives you what the fault code is 13 so for that component and that could be open circuit short circuit short to battery or whatever and i've actually drawn a table of this so that's great now your first thing you're going to do is you're going to try and clear these faults and go well maybe it was just a blip maybe there was something so we're going to go clear these faults and it's going to clear the faults and we're going to go back in and it's going to say airbag no faults but i bet you if we turn the ignition off and on again those faults will reappear now actually watch it when it turns back on watch that airbag warning light destiny see if it comes on and so he's on he's off he's back on again so oh. i reckon if we go back in when it's done it's fresh bear with me i don't use this every day so it's rescanning now and i'll bet you it's found something in the so we know it's a recurring it's a recurring okay. airbag has got two faults right and we've got the basically we've got these same two faults again now one thing i wanted to add is a lot of the airbag faults on Land Rovers and Range Rovers, bear in mind you've got your curtain airbag, which is here, but you've also got your side airbag, which is in the seat. Now, where the seats move backwards and forwards a lot, the connectors are obviously fixed to the ground, the carpet, the floor, and they have a little loop. And as you move your car back, it sort of moves backwards and forwards. That can put a lot of strain on the connectors. So a lot of people are saying, when it's the side airbag, not the curtain airbag fault, or the seat, or because there are some sensors in the seat occupancy sensor. First port of call is always check your your seat. But the, the gap IID tool is really clever. So not only will it tell us what the problem is, we can also go and look at live view data. So I'm going to go back to the main menu and I'm going to go live values and I'm going to select what live values I want to look at. It's going to give me a whole list of everything in the car. But luckily, it does 
do it by ECU. So we're looking at the airbag ECU. Now we can go down here. Now some of these things, I don't know what they are. Deployment control 1, 16, 19. What? I've no idea what they are. But some of them it's like driver's safety belt sensor. Now I can imagine that's the little bit where you plug in here. Have you got your seat belt in? Because it needs to know that. So I can see nothing in here that related to curtain airbag. I've got passenger airbag passenger restraint but i've got nothing there you go and then we're on to a couple of passenger safety there's nothing in here seat track there's nothing in here i've been through and one thing you can actually do on the iid tool is you can search so you can put in the word drivers okay dry and driver's safety belt but there's nothing to do with curtain um so i've i've played about but it's quite cool that you can do that uh, there you go there's nothing for curtain so I wrote to the guys at Gap Diagnostics and they sent me a document that said, ah, for the curtain airbag, you need to look at live value 19. Right, so I've actually made a table. I found some data online and I've made a table. And basically what, it, what, what, what you've got here is I've got the live data, um, what they call the deployment control value, what device that is looking at, what the minimum and maximum resistance for that component should be in ohms, and then this is the fault code you will get. So the fault code we've got is B0029. Now you can see that B0029 is the right hand curtain airbag. It's live value 19. And you can see that if it ends in an 11, it's a short to ground. If it ends in a 12, it's short to 12 volts. And if it ends in a 13, which ours does, it's an open circuit. So it's telling me it should have a zero ohm resistance on this circuit. So I've done this table and I'll publish this. I'll put the link below where you can actually look up fault code to what component it is to, um, to what the live data is. So we need 19, but, but let me see what else we've got around 19. Let's go, so let's go. Interestingly, if we do, if I look on my table, we can see that 20 is the left hand curtain airbag and 19 is the right hand. So I'm going to do 18, 19, 20 and 21 just so that we've got something to compare it to. So we are going to go, we're in live values. Right, where are we going? We've got ABS, right, where's the airbag one, airbag. So we're going to go 18, 19, what did I say? 18, 19, 20, 21. So what you do is you select the value 18, excuse me 19 20 21 okay and you can do up to eight simultaneously i'm going to go view right now it's telling me they're not available now we did have these earlier didn't we mm. um so something's let's have a i can't refresh it Should I do, well, an ignition on do ignition and on and off again yeah Right, I'm going to re I'm going to re I'm going to close the app and do that live data because that is a bit dodgy, isn't it? Mm. We definitely had that earlier. Um, so right, let me let me close the app down on my phone. Right, let's open the tool again. All right, connect to the last tool. So we definitely had this live data. So why it whether it had timed out, whether we'll be sat yakking the the maybe the CAN mm. bus had turned off. So let's go live values. And let's go live values. We're looking for the complete list. Airbag at the bottom there. Right, and we need 18, 18 19, 20, 20, 21 view. There we go. Right, so you can see now that the writing's quite small, but 18, which is the right hand seat airbag, the value is 2.4. 19 which is the curtain airbag is zero so this is the problem 20 is the left hand curtain airbag you can see that's that's around 2.4 and then this is so this is our problem so now this is an interesting point so the iid tool can tell you the resistance of the circuit so basically what it's doing it's looking at the control module the brain in the middle here and it's looking up the wires what can it see on the end of the wires the left hand curtain airbag and it's saying that circuit up and back has got a resistance i can see a resistance of the wire and the airbag of 2.4 ohms now you you can't go checking checking an airbag module by putting a voltmeter on it 
to check the resistance because that actually applies a voltage and it actually measures the current but shows that translates it into so don't ever do that because you will be at risk of actually exploding the airbag so the iid tool is like an explosion saving device it allows us to see the circuit what it can see in the module so we are now gonna analyze this so we we now know we've got a problem with the circuit going to our left hand curtain airbag which is the airbag on this side here so destiny and i now are gonna take off the bits of trim and we're gonna have a look at the curtain airbag and look at the connector so when we've got that stripped out we'll join you and we'll see if we can replug unplug use contact cleaner or we could even put a resistor across the end of the wire and that will check that the wire because we could have a zero resistance if someone has just cut the wire somewhere because there would be no circuit at all so that's the sort of theory now let's get on and have a look if we can find the problem right so here we are we have we have found the curtain airbag it's we, we've lowered the headline in and if destiny shines a torch we found the connector on the back of the and we we removed the connector there but we then noticed that the connector was and look this this is all this foam is degraded look it's all gone and the wire is it's 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 all brittle and and i don't know what has caused that i mean that's got to be pretty savage so we we're gonna have to strip this back to i mean i think it's good under the yeah look it's good there but something somewhere somehow has has degraded that whether it's the mice Oh, but look it's just and you can see that the airbag body is quite rusty up there we don't know if it's water exposure mm. can you see that through there yeah so we are gonna have to make some solder repairs here which is worrying and that's only one of the we've also got the other there is another the sensor one, yeah. so we're, we're don't know if that's a common fault or what I didn't come across that on the forum but right we shall we shall point to note if you are messing around with airbags make sure you disconnect your battery negative especially if you're reconnecting right let's investigate and repair right so we've soldered the wires we've put some new wire in we've used the correct wire we've soldered it or we've heat shrinked it i'm not sure if that's even like proper but i think it's fine and now look 19 is now reading 2.54 so it wasn't the airbag no need to buy a new curtain airbag literally that wire degraded i'm i'm still puzzled and worried by i've never seen wire quite do that before can um, you try clearing the fault yeah, let's see if it'll clear the fault. That is exactly. Let's do that then. So let's go. So let's go back to thingy. Back to the ECU. Back, 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 back. Um, go to faults. Now it'll probably have the. You've got the airbag light still on the dash. So is it just that one fault now? Well, we probably haven't. We probably we haven't cleared that fault. So it's not going to clear itself. So it's going to show us the same two faults. I think the right curtain and the right side restraints, which which may or may not we haven't done anything in theory to f so let's done right so it's now showing no faults but let me refresh and search again and then we'll re if this we'll do reignition cycles whoa but i've still got this on here so You've if i do an ignition cycle let's do an ignition cycle right it's on it should flash off <gasps> and, and it's off oh! Oh! Oh, celebrate you too early <laughs> right so let's refresh the search there and see what it's not happy with now god i thought we got it then oh big disappointment airbag one fault so we're getting it down so this is the right side restraint sensor two sensor no sensor. so we're now gonna have to find out where the the we're gonna to have to do a bit of googling to work out where this right side restraints sensor is but that can wait till after lunch because now it is lunch time look 12 42 right catch you after lunch right so we're on this second sensor the rear sensor so it is the side crash protection sensor which is show us where it goes it goes in that little hole there bolts on there we'll have a look at it in a minute so we've taken the quarter panel off we'll do a video of how to take the quarter panel off because we'll look good now won't we destiny because we've worked out how to do it right so and destiny unbolted it and then it just fell off in her hand again so what is going on so no re no wonder it's got no airbag signal look the wires have just i don't know what's happened 
Um, so right, we've got to get busy, but I think we can get this fixed. So we are going to strip this back, solder it, do it all again on this sensor, and then I reckon we got ourselves a nearly functional Discovery Sport. Right, Destiny thinks it's Mises. She's, if you have a look, point out there, you've got like look, little scratchy, gnawy bits. And there's them um, there. They've been on all the edges. But why have they eaten through the airbag wires? The other wires are all functional. So do you reckon they scam put up into the headlining or what? We need to get a, we need to get a works cap. Yeah. Right then, let's, let's get this fixed. Put some rat poison down. Right, so we have resoldered all that we've cut those wires trided that up heat shrinked it put the sensor back on we're all looking good so let's jump in the front now push 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 because that's where we left everyone before lunch what did you have for lunch destiny oh, what did i have for lunch soup soup do you know i had soup as well right then let's get the phone out so before we put the car all back together let's just check right, open up the gap diagnostics Error, uh, contact to the last tool. Do, 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 do. Yeah, do you want to film? Right, there it goes, it's loading it all. We haven't got any light in the reflection, have we? No, all good. Right, okay, so, let's we go in the live value. Oh, we, no, we don't know what the live value was for that parameter, no. do we? We couldn't find it on our sheet. So let's go to faults, and we should have, faults will be red. What's it moaning about now? Door don't open. Know. The airbag light is not on. The airbag light's not on. Right? Oh. Airbag light, one fault. So it's got the right side restraint sensor, um, which we think we fixed. So we're going to clear that. Right, now let's refresh it. Airbag, no fault. Refresh. And then we've got to turn the ignition off and on again, haven't we? Is it. What's it not happy with? Right, look, we've got no faults. We've got no faults. Right, so let's turn the ignition off. Right. Okay. That's off. Turn it on. Airbag light comes on. Goes off. Goes off. Does it stay off? It looks like it stays off. It stays off? Yes. We have done it. Right, so yeah. So hopefully that will help you. So yeah, investigate the airbags. It's often a wiring, a connector issue. It's rarely the airbags themselves. Um, yeah, hopefully that helps you. I'm not an expert on it, but hopefully that has helped you. But we are now fixed. We're ready for MOT nearly. We've got to get the windscreen done next. Stick the front number plate on. Put the washer bottle on and we're good to go. Right, I'll catch you at the MOT maybe.